Hello everybody and welcome back to another Solo Beatles album review. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Paul McCartney's debut album entitled McCartney. Here you see the album jacket. Uh, this was released on April 17th, 1970. And all the instruments on this album were, were played by Paul McCartney. And there was uh, just some backing vocals that were done by Linda McCartney. And so my wife and I have just recently listened to this and we're gonna go through and give our scores. Uh, as always, we give our scores out of a five star, I guess, total. And then at the end, we round up all our scores and give the overall album score for the entire album out of five. So uh, starting off with the first track, it's a real short one. It's just called The Lovely Linda. Um, this is a really short song. I don't know if it's 30, 40 seconds, something like that. Not too much, but uh, I think Paul was just kind of getting his equipment set up and kind of just played something to to get it, get the sound figured out for that and stuff. And uh, it's just it's a nice little intro to the song, but there's not too much of it. A uh, nice little tribute to Linda at the beginning, but um, yeah, like I said, there's not too much to it, so I just gave it a three out of five. Yeah, I, I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot to mention about right. it or anything it's just a short little song so i did the same i gave it a three out of five okay it's a nice little intro but sure. yep. <laughs> not much of a song uh the second track on the album is that would be something um for me this one doesn't really seem to be too much in the lyrics department it's kind of just repeats the same phrases a few times um i'm not i know paul does this a lot where he does kind of this vocal drumming Type stuff with his you know he's kind of like scatting or whatever he's doing with uh, I've, I've never really been a fan of him doing that and he does it quite a bit on this song um, otherwise it's a pretty simple song really and um, you know especially coming off like the let it be and Abbey Road albums where there's some really really good songs on those albums there's really not didn't seem like a whole lot of thought going into this song um, it's enjoyable enough for the album but um, I gave it a three out of five yeah, it seemed like it was a really heavy on the bass, like that was kind mm -hmm. of the main instrument that you heard throughout mm -hmm. most of the song, and there was some others. I noticed the vocal per percussion, I mean, it was, I don't know, it was fine, it was there, whatever, <laughs> it wasn't fantastic. Um, yeah, it was just the same lyrics over and over again, I All guess right. I would say. Um, it wasn't, I don't know, the greatest song, I gave it a three out of five. <laughs> okay. Um, Valentine Day. Uh, this is a, another instrumental song. There's not really a whole lot to it. It's not really one of my favorite. I mean, there's several instrumentals on this album, and this is probably one of my least favorite, uh, at least way down there anyway. Um, I haven't really ever been too much of a fan of it. It's not like a track that I just pick out and play on its own or anything like that. But um, yeah, not much else I can say about that one. It's, it's a three out of five for me, though. I mean, it was, I'd say, a shorter one of the instrumental songs mm -hmm. in the album. I'm not 100% positive, but yeah, there wasn't anything that really stood out. Um, I'm really not a big fan of instrumental songs <laughs> of any kind, no matter who's doing it. Um, I gave it a 2 out of 5. 2, okay. All right, then next we have the song Every Night. Uh, now, for me, this is one of the better songs on the album. This is one that I really enjoy. Um, you know, thinking about it, it's, it's really a simple song. But uh, it's a really nice, nice ballad. I like the guitar. And uh, one thing I actually really like on this one is his falsetto when he kind of in between the verses mm -hmm. and stuff. I really like that, that part of the song. Um, it's just a really good, really good kind of love song and stuff. So I, I give it a, a five out of five. I agree. This is um, one of the better songs in the album. The one of two that I gave a five out of five on. <laughs> um, but um, I, you know, even there's kind of the ooze, which are usually not something I like in songs, but yeah. I liked it on this song. Um, the guitar, I don't know, it's just a really nice, sweet song. It's a little on the shorter side, which is kind of nice sometimes. Sometimes songs can drag on. So yeah, I gave it a five out of five. Okay. Uh, next one is hot as sun slash glasses um, again and this is another somewhat simple instrumental song uh, it's kind of just got that one riff that's kind of repeated a couple times I think two maybe two or three I think it was maybe just two um, but I do I, I do like this one better than Valentine Day so there's that um, 
as far as the glasses section at the end, there's uh, Paul's playing wine glasses for a short little bit, and then there's right after that, uh, there's just a short snippet of a song that he was working on. I think it was called Suicide, and there's just a few a few seconds of that song tagged on the end there. They don't really fit in my view. They didn't really add anything to the song. Um, kind of just stuck them on there, I guess. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I do like the hottest sun part of it with the, the guitar lick and stuff. I gave it a four out of five. To me, it almost had like a Caribbean style guitar. Yeah. I guess I'm not, I don't know. It wasn't my favorite. Again, instrumentals are just not something that I enjoy listening to very much. Um, I gave it a two. A two? A two out okay. of five. Um, I should mention that on the deluxe edition of this album, there is a live version from mm -hmm. in the later 70s. And the hottest, I actually like that hottest sun version a lot better. It's it like you said, it's got more of a Caribbean feel mm -hmm. to it, and this one, that one has even more so, I think. Okay. And it's a little bit faster tempo mm -hmm. to it. It's, I actually really like that one. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on to the next song, it's Junk. Uh, this was a song that Paul had written while the Beatles were in India in 1968. Um, it didn't make it into any of the Beatles albums. I know they had worked on recording it a couple times. You can hear it on. Uh, anthology album and things like that their version of it um, didn't seem like the other guys were too interested in it so but it's it's a nice sort of like uh, I put here it's kind of a, more of a melancholy type of song um, but it's got a nice guitar lick on it and from what I understand this is actually uh, take two of the song the first one uh, is later on the album we'll <laughs> talk about that but uh, the second one he added some vocals here and it's a, it's a really nice Really nice song. I give this give this one a five out of five. Um, yeah, I do like the guitar riff in it, um, and but yeah, it was a little bit slower, kind of a shuffle drums to it. Um, I don't know, it wasn't anything that really stood out to me about this song. It was a fine song. I guess I gave it a three out of five. Okay. Uh, next up, we have I think this is the last song on side one of the album. And this is Man We Was Lonely. Um, this one, you really notice there's, it's got really a country feel to it. There's a lot of the country sound to the guitars. And even the way there's sections of the song, even Paul's voice, he has kind of that twangy southern accent in his voice when he's singing, which is kind of interesting. Um, let's see here, what else did I put? Um, yeah, kind of just Paul talk. you know, uh, after the Beatles broke up, and he's kind of just talking about, um, you know, even if even though they were a group of four guys that were always together, they were just lonely. They wanted to get out and do their own thing. Um, they didn't, weren't really getting along at the time. And, you know, after the split, now they were lonely. Now everything's all right. So um, it's kind of a, a, a fun song. I like the country feel to it. I gave it a five out of five. Um, I don't know. It had the intro of the song sounded different from the rest of the song, like it almost didn't fit. There was kind of had a choir of voices with, I mean, there was a lot of harmonies that um, worked okay for the song. I wasn't a huge fan of the guitar in the bridge part of the song. Um, I gave it a three out of five. Just a three, okay. All right, then flipping the album over, the first track is the song called Ooh You. Um, I think this has kind of a groovy or funky feel to it. Um, the lyrics, I think, uh, I think I read the lyrics weren't added to the song until like right before he went into the studio, and you can kind of tell oh. that they were pretty hastily written. There's, I don't really care for the lyrics all that much. <laughs> it kind of shows that they were written last minute. Um, and yeah, it might, it might have actually been a better song as an instrumental, maybe. I kind of like the, the groovy feel of it, but. Um, yeah, even even with just the instrumentation, it's kind of all over. You know, they got like the cowbell and all this different stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of dis disorganized sounding a little bit, but um, it's all right. It's mediocre, I guess, for mm -hmm. me. I give it a three out of five. Yeah, it has the guitar is kind of like a rocking guitar, but yet it's got a slower feel to it. Um, and then the bass and guitar are mirroring each other a lot mm. throughout the song, which is different. You don't hear that very often. It does kind of drag on and kind of get a little, yeah, like all over the place. It just right. kind of keeps going and going. And yeah, you, I mean, I didn't realize the lyrics, you, like what you said, that it, they were added on last minute, but it was just kind of like 
yeah, not much to it or last <laughs> minute. So um, I gave it a three out of five. Okay. Uh, the next up we have Mama Miss America. Um, one thing I've, I've always liked the bass lines in the, in this song. Um, you know, it's, there's kind of, you can kind of tell halfway through it's two songs put together, you know, mm -hmm. it, you can pretty much tell where the edit is about halfway through, you know, it's a more up tempo song in the beginning. And then at the edit, it kind of is a, a slower tempo song, but you, you know, both of them have the really good bass lines that I like, you know, that's Paul's forte is kind of having mm -hmm. interesting bass lines. Um, but it's, yeah, it's basically, it's, it's a nice jam, I guess. No lyrics or anything, but it's, it's a fun one for me. Um, I give this one a four out of five. I'm not, I, I actually like instrumentals. But it <laughs> yeah, it, I think the only time I would enjoy instrumentals is if they were live, like, so I can see the artist. Otherwise, I don't know. It's just not something I enjoy listening to. Um, it, and maybe because it was basically two songs, it just seemed like it was kind of a long song, mm. you know, being that they were put together like that. Um, I don't know. wasn't anything that stood out to me. I gave it a two out of five. I was guessing two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next song is Teddy Boy. This is another song that Paul had written in India in 1968. And again, he tried recording these, this song, or excuse me, this song with the Beatles. And I know there's a version on the Anthology 3 album where um, you can really tell that John is trying to like sabotage the session. He's singing like these hoedown lyrics mm -hmm. and it's just... <laughs> He's not really enjoying it. You can kind of hear that he's talking to other people in the background, not really paying attention. Um, and it, I wasn't really, you know, even a fan of, of the Beatles versions. I, I suppose partly because no one was really, none of the other guys were interested in it. They weren't really putting any effort into it. So it didn't seem very enjoyable. But after uh, listening to this, you know, re-recorded version for this album. He's got Linda's nice uh, harmonies in the background. It kind of adds a lot to it, and it's a it's a much more enjoyable song. It actually has kind of a story of the this Teddy boy that's going out and doing stuff. Um, I gave it a four out of five. And probably because it's a little bit more of a story to me, it had kind of a childish sound or feel to it, or mm -hmm. it just reminded me of like a a children's song. Um, okay. kind of a simple melody. It's got some different rhythms where it's like there's a time change that happens quite frequently throughout the song, which to me just adds a little bit of interest to it. It's kind of got, I suppose that's the Linda's vocals, I didn't realize, but it's like a background choir sound to it. Um, it's still just, it's a simpler song, I guess. I gave it a three out of five. Three. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next up we have Sing Along Junk, which is basically the instrumental version of the previous song junk i think this was probably the take one where he kind of recorded this without any lyrics first um yeah just the instrumental version it's kind of fun if you want to do like a karaoke type thing <laughs> and sing along the lyrics yourself with the song um it's a nice enough version of the, you know I, I like i like the guitar mm -hmm. you know the melody of that song and everything so it's kind of a nice touch there um i think Maybe it's kind of redundant having two of the same song on the album. He could have left it off and maybe replaced it with a different song, or maybe he didn't have any <laughs> any newer <laughs> songs he wanted to put on there. But um, it's still it's fun enough. Uh, I gave it a four out of five. Um, considering it's an instrumental, I actually scored it a little bit higher, mainly because I do like the guitar riff, mm -hmm. and then it, it has just that familiar feel because I've heard that other song oh, before. Right. Um, so I kind of you know it feels a little bit more like an actual song versus some of the other instrumentals. Um, so I gave it a three out of five. <laughs> All right, then uh, next song is Maybe I'm Amazed. Um, I mean, what can you say about this song? <laughs> this is probably like the best song, just a great love song. It's, it's probably one of Paul's best in his entire solo career, in my opinion. I mean, he's done so much stuff, you know, over the last 50 years. This is Alan was just turned 50 years mm. old last month, and this is still probably one of his best songs he's ever written. Um, it was never released as a single until later. There was a live version that was released as a single, and I think, if I remember right, that actually did hit number one. So um, it's definitely a great song, and I gave this a five out of five. Uh, yeah, I, I do really like this song. Um, even... 
uh, taking it away from all Beatles or whatever. I mean, just in general, I do really like the song. I've heard it several times, obviously, even before listening to the album mm -hmm. as well. And I mean, we've seen Paul a couple times in concert and he always performs it. Um, the piano is probably one of my favorite parts of the song and I play piano, so that's part of it. Even, um, you know, his vocal gets to that kind of yelling point mm -hmm. in the song too, but it just works with the song and everything. And there's kind of some different styles that comes in and out. This song saves this album to me. <laughs> <laughs> I would give it higher than a five if I could. So, um, yeah, I give it a five out of five. Yeah. One thing we should note that he probably shouldn't sing this live anymore. His voice is not, oh, right. <laughs> not really capable of singing this song anymore, but um, it's it's still a really, really great song. Uh, so we go from that high 5.5 <laughs> 5 out of 5 or 10 out of 5, whatever. <laughs> and then we go to the last song on the album, Kreen Akrori. Um, I think it's based on a Brazilian Indian tribe. Paul saw a, a film about these people and... He decided to write a song about it. Um, and I've read a lot of people really like this song, but for me, I'm pretty glad that it's on the, the very end of the album because there's a lot of times where, okay, we get to, we got past Maybe I'm Amazed, we got this song, I'll play a few seconds, it's like, oh, I'll just shut it off and go to the next album. Um, it's fun once in a while if I'm listening to the entire album. I maybe listen to the whole thing, but not too often. Um, yeah, it's just... Not not my favorite song on the mm -hmm. album by far, <laughs> but I did still give it a, a three out of five. It's it's got some some interesting sections. I mean, playing the drums on the on a guitar case is kind of cool. It's kind of oh. interesting effect, but yeah, yeah, three out of five is the best I could do. I think. <laughs> so is that the beginning of the song? Is the I think he kind of does that throughout the entire okay. thing here and there. Because I think if it, from what my notes are, you know, it's just a kind of a longer drum start. Like it's mainly just mm -hmm. drums at the beginning. Um, and then it gets into, there's some Oz with the guitar as well. Oh, yeah. So there's a little bit of vocal to it. Um, and then there's some breathing that happens yeah, kind of towards the end. Yeah, I think that's supposed to be end. like the Indians running away oh. or something. I don't know. Which to me is just really weird. Which <laughs> and he plays makes... a bow and arrow on it and you can hear the, the arrow oh, snap on that, on that song. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's different. Of all the instrumental songs, this was my least favorite one. I gave it a one. A one? Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's that bad, but it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's down there. <laughs> so, anyway, with the, with having <laughs> said that, uh, we to total up our scores, and uh, for a score out of five, you gave it... Uh, the total on this album is 2.9. 2.9, okay. Uh, mine was a little bit higher. It's, <laughs> I thought it was actually going to be higher than what it was, but it, I got a 3.9, which is almost a four. Um you know, with with the, a lot of the lower scores that I have on here, I really do enjoy this. Like, you know, as an entire album, it's it's a really good album for me. I mean, I've listened to it so many times over the years. It's just you just know all the stuff anyway. But mm -hmm. yeah, three point nine out of five. So that's our score for this one. And I love to see your comments below. What you think of the album? How you'd like to score this in your in your opinion? And our next album. We'll be coming up shortly. We'll, we're going through all the all the solo, solo Beatles albums. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. So take care. <laughs>